This is not a movie. NASA asteroid warning, major impact is expected, says NASA agency boss. Let's hear what he has to say. He claims that on average, every 60 years, we have a, an asteroid impact. We've had one recently, just in the Aleutian Islands. We were lucky enough, it was in the uh, south of the middle of the Aleutian Islands, and it struck just south of the islands into the Pacific Ocean there. So we were lucky that it was not in a uh, populated area. That's just a matter of chance, of course. And, and the NASA, NASA administrator is here to say that this event was not unique. unique. In, in fact, fact, it is an event, event that we model will occur, occur about, about once every 60 years. years. And, and of course, in the last century, century we've had three, three such events. events. One of which, uh, by the way, let me just step up real quick. We, we, we talk about how this happened February 15th, 2013. That same day, there was another asteroid, not 20 meters in diameter, but 30 meters in diameter that came within 17,000 miles of the Earth. In other words, it was within the geostationary orbit belt of our asteroids. That same day. Now, we know that this week and up to, Feb up to Friday, they will be having a joint NASA, ESA, FEMA, U.S. government, and various other space agencies trial, an asteroid impact drill. Uh, of course, the thing is that it's only going to have a 1% chance of impact, and it's a tabletop exercise. And for the life of me, I don't know what they, what they can get out of that with a 1% impact probability. They should make it like a 50%, see what happens. Um, and then uh, if you see the video before this one, ESA says, oh, we're so lucky, the window of opportunity uh, shows that it's going to strike in the South Pacific, which is not a populated area, so we don't have to do anything. Oh, whoopee, you don't have to do anything. So nobody fails the exercise, the drill. Nobody does anything. What can I tell you? That's not a drill. A drill, you want to see what you can do, make it 50% impact, and it's going to hit somewhere in a major city and see what you can do there. Anyway. Uh, this is uh, by Claire Anderson on Express UK. Uh, we have the, we just heard the statement um, that was given to us and uh, in, uh, NASA Administrator John Bridenstine warned people to expect a major asteroid impact in their lifetime. Bridenstine said to the public, uh, the public writes off the severity of this risk from an asteroid. Congressional representatives spoke about the threat of an Earth-altering asteroid impact during a speech at the International Academy of Ast Ar Astronomics Planetary Defense Conference, which is taking place now. He said the idea of an asteroid collision with Earth is met with a giggle factor. Nobody believes it. Bridenstine said, we have to make sure that people understand that this is not about Hollywood. It's not about movies. This is about ultimately protecting the only planet we know right now to host life, and that is the planet Earth. We have to use our systems, use our capabilities to ultimately get a lot more data, and we have to do it faster. We know for a fact that the dinosaurs did not have a space program, but we do, and we need to use it. Uh, faster, meaning uh, you need more uh, financing, you need more scientists, you need a lot more people worldwide working on something like this. You have to uh, reallocate your defense spending from military and arms into this type of planet defense. Uh, and I'm sure they have a lot of beautiful um, high technology things that they can use to disperse or uh, uh, you know, target at a, a, a celestial body and blow it to kingdom come. You know, that would be good. Uh, so see what they can do there. And they've also called for, the uh, firms working with NASA have called for uh, amateur astronomers to volunteer to look at various images that NASA takes, hundreds of thousands of them, that they don't have enough people to employ to look at these images and the uh, artificial intelligence cannot make heads or tails of what they're looking at. Uh, they don't have the 
cognizance and the intelligence to find out what they're looking at and if there is a movement in the image and if that movement is uh, uh, feasible enough to be counted as an asteroid or a comet or something. Uh, and whereas humans have the ability to do that and there are, uh, of course they're not paid, they're volunteers, but it's a fantastic thing to do uh, because you're, you're helping humanity, obviously. And there have been times recently where amateur astronomers have discovered such bodies and reported them to NASA and other agencies. And it's the amateurs that have found them. Can you imagine? Uh, all right, so they need more people. And so I, I know a friend of mine has her son. I was really blown out of my mind, blew me out of my mind. He is an avid uh, uh, amateur astronomer. He even has his, he spends a lot of money on telescopes. And uh, his telescopes video and uh, photo uh, various movement sky, the sky um, areas of the sky. And he has taken fantastic images and videos. And they have these competitions where they show what they found and they get pri tremendous pri monetary prizes as well. And it's, an, it's national and it's internet, local and, interna and international. And he's received international prizes, you know. So they do get some help financially from their prizes, obviously. That, that helps them get even better uh, telescopes. Uh, but the, it's these people that, I don't know how many are out there, uh, that uh, can help, you know? So, uh, this is a reality. Uh, Jim Bridenstine warned people to expect a major asteroid impact in their lifetime. And uh, we know that the whole Earth is strewn with asteroid craters, asteroid impact craters. And we've had a tremendous amount of this type of activity even in the Old Testament in the Holy Bible. We saw it, for example, with Noah's flood, something really weird happened there. We saw it as, uh, um, again during um, the Exodus with the uh, reptiles coming out of the ground, the insects flying all over the place, animals fleeing area because of perhaps gas emissions, vibrations, frequencies, uh, electromagnetic pulses. Um, we saw the um, Red Sea parting uh, and uh, coming back again. It, it, there was a geological, obviously geological, and of course all this has to do every single earthquake, small or big, every volcanic eruption, small or big, is under the, the um, direction of our Lord Jesus Christ God. It's not just uh, by chance that all this happens. Now, uh, and then we had the um, famine, that took place in Israel, in the area of uh, the Middle East in Israel. And we had uh, Jacob's sons, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, going into Egypt to get uh, grain because they had famine. They were going to die otherwise. And by divine providence, Joseph was already there at the right hand of the Pharaoh to accept them and uh, give them hospitality and uh, uh, food and uh, comfort in the dire uh, era of this famine and drought and um, from what we understand it was an asteroid impact that caused volcanic eruptions one of my past videos you'll see that having to do with uh, affecting the whole area of northern africa all the way through saudi arabia to the to the east and all the way up to iraq and perhaps changed even the climate of the uh, northern african uh, area we know for example from the sphinx uh, which was covered uh, by sand up to the time it was uh, dug out. Uh, we know that it was up to the, the Sphinx was up to the sand, uh, its neck in sand. And when they dug it out, they saw that the body of the Sphinx was eroded by water erosion, meaning that the whole area was tropical, very rainy, very wet. So something happened that stopped that, brought the sand. As we know, the sand can also come from the volcanic eruptions and tsunamis. Uh, so yeah, that, that was totally destroyed from what it was before. And we have all these geological upheavals in the Old Testament written about. So uh, here we are. Uh, it's a matter of time. We have asteroids, at least 50 asteroid uh, craters, impact craters in Australia. We have tremendous ones in Canada. 
uh, where you also, okay, I'll go into the trouble of saying it yet again. If you look at Google Earth, please go and do so. On the top of South America and the bottom of South America, from the east, from the west to the east, you have these finger-like intrusions on the crust of the Earth, as if the finger of God pushed the mantle from west to east. That to me looks like to be, it was a huge comet that slid on. It wasn't direct 90% impact like you see impact rate. This one slid. Uh, and they were the same direction from west to east. And the one on the bottom of the South America, it looks as if it cut the peninsula from South America and the tip of North Antarctica and cut that and slid in and created this, the volcanic sandwich islands where it stopped. And you have another smaller one again, again west to east in the area above Australia, in uh, uh, the Indonesia area of Papua, Papua New Guinea. So all these are, are there. And the, later, the latest Google uh, images of uh, impact craters in uh, the Sahara Desert, you know, southwest Egypt, and another one in an impact crater in Iraq, were, were found by geologists, uh, paleoastrologists uh, uh, from Google Earth. And they went to locate them. And they saw that they were, in fact, Asteroid impact craters that had effects on the volcanic activity later on that caused economic collapse of empires. For example, Cleopatra and the Egyptian Empire, the last pharaoh empire, was caused because of the economic collapse and the dire situation of the asteroid impact and the uh, volcanic activities and that happened about three to 5,000 years before, before her. Because she, she finished up around 30 BC, no, 30, 30, yeah, 30 BC, about 50, 60 years before Christ. And she was uh, adamant in trying to have a, an alliance with Rome so that Rome could protect Egypt and uh, provide for Egypt because she had such tremendous economic um, upheaval and uprisings in Egypt because they were hungry, they were, they were emaciated. Okay, so uh, they're saying it's a matter of time. Every 60 years we get uh, impacted and we're, we have enough uh, technology to protect Earth because it's a matter of time before we're all wiped out like the dinosaurs were. So NASA is currently working on trading 90% of asteroids which are more than um, 140 uh, meters in size. Elon Musk and SpaceX are reportedly aiding the tracking after NASA paid the company $69 million to solve this problem. How are they going to solve it? I have no idea. In a joint mission, the double asteroid redirect test DART mission will send a rocket to collide where, with the near-Earth asteroid. We're talking about Didymus, the smaller one of the two. One is about 800 meters and the other one is about 150 meters. So they're going to, as I said in the beginning of this video, they're going to sm smash the spaceship into the little one, trying to significantly alter its uh, trajectory. And that's just like a test run. The asteroid will be steered away from Earth if the test dart is successful. So we shall see soon enough. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.